What's up guys? Mikey Bustos here, aka Ants Canada. Thank you for watching the Ants Canada Ant channel where we talk about ants. <laughs> On our Facebook page, we asked you what video you guys wanted to see next. And a lot of you guys asked for a video of um, my ants, an update as to the colonies that I have. And so I wanted to create this video to show you guys the ants that I have um, and some of my other pets. Um, I'm here, of course, in Manila, Philippines, and it is hot. Like, talk about constantly sweating. Um, and in this room in particular, in my living room, I can't really use air conditioning because I have several animals around here that need to stay warm, um, my ants included. So stay tuned to the end of this video. I'll be talking a lot about the ant colonies that I have. And uh, oh, there's some of my other animals. There's my pet pig and my miniature schnauzer. I hope you find this video interesting. All right, I'm going to start first with my Ecophila smaragdina colony, my um, perhaps my favorite colony of all time. They're commonly known as Asian weaver ants, and if you haven't seen our video um, of how this colony began, I suggest you watch it when you get a chance. I documented, you see that sort of nest back there in the corner? They, I documented them creating that nest. Now. It's perfect timing because if you look over there to this side, it seems like they're creating another nest. It's awesome. Um, they've been working on this nest, this new satellite nest over there, um, over the past two days. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, this colony has been growing pretty steadily since I got them. They were originally a wild-caught nest and at the time I didn't know if I had caught the queen because well the most you can do with this species if you're collecting them from the wild is to collect all the nests from the same tree and hope that the queen is in there but it's of course there's no guarantee that she will be in there um, and in this case there were only two nests in a single tree so I prayed that she was in there and I didn't see evidence of her until maybe about two weeks later Look at all of those eggs! It's awesome! You know, over the past two weeks, there's been an egg explosion. It's been unreal. Um, so now I do know that a queen is indeed in here. Um, and someone suggested perhaps there might be two queens. The colony seems to be doing well, and I expect a big population boost coming soon. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and feed this colony. This colony eats about one large or semi-adult uh, dubia cockroach. I've got a dubia feeder cockroach colony growing for my various animals that eat insects. And so here we go. So as you can see, the ants kind of just grab it and they pin it down. A lot of times they'll continue stretching the cockroach until it splits completely in half. Um, you can see towards the lower end that there are some cockroach body parts that they kind of just hold on to, not sure why. And in some parts of the nest they've actually incorporated the exoskeletons of the cockroach body parts into the nest structure. like they build their silk around it and it becomes part of their home. It's kind of interesting. There we go. Eat, eat, eat! Grow! Grow that larvae! So you guys can make more nests. Now a lot of people ask me if the bites from this species hurt. Well, thankfully, they don't have a stinger, but they do bite and spray formic acid. And they are notorious for delivering painful bites, but they're actually not so painful, um, especially like on your hands and your fingers. But say in the soft parts of your arm, it might really hurt. But the pain goes away um, and it just leaves a little red bump at most. Um, I also find that, you know, these guys are known to be very super aggressive but um when they're away from the nest they're not so bad well see see how visual they are they can see watch 
the ants know that I'm around and they feel slight vibrations around. I'm going to open my hand here. See, they know I'm around, but I mean, I'm not too afraid because if you're just careful around them, they won't attack. Like, if you kind of act like a swaying branch, they are usually okay. And when I try picking them up, they run away. They're actually quite afraid. But if I were to touch that nest down there, that would be a different story. <laughs> they would really bite me. Now I'm going to go ahead and spray them. I spray this colony once every evening or whenever it rains during the day. It's rainy season now here in the Philippines, so um, they get a lot of water. Now the queen doesn't leave the nest, so I make sure to spray the nest directly um, so that they can get their daily dose of moisture as they would in the wild. All right. Sorry, guys. And these ants are totally used to typhoon amounts of rain. So there we go. And that's all. Now, if you guys happen to watch my first video on this colony, you'll notice that Initially, I had a chico tree, that's the species of this tree here, along with a calamansi tree, which is a citrus type plant. I removed the calamansi tree because it seemed like the ants were not interested in nesting in the tree, and I just replaced it with another chico tree. And it seems to have been a good decision because they're, well, starting another leaf nest there at the back. You can see them working on that previous cockroach meal. I love watching them handle their food. It, they're super strong and uh, they seem to coordinate well with each other when transporting very large food items. Now when this cockroach is done, they'll dump the exoskeleton just under their main nest at the foot of the tree. And it's really convenient because those exoskeletons decompose and then enrich the soil in which the tree that the ants live in grow in. So it's kind of a nice symbiotic thing going on there. Okay, this here is an example of what I mean by the ants that live with me. I just fed the Ecophila smaragdina colony a cockroach, uh, maybe was it two minutes ago? And look, look at all of these ants here. This here is a new colony that just recently, like maybe this week, moved into my place. It's the notorious crazy ant known as Parachachina longicornis. And it seems like they're feasting on the juices from the crushed cricket that I fed the weaver ants just, yeah, it had to have been maybe two or three minutes ago. They're so fast. Unbelievable. All right, and here's another species of ant, a small species um, that's living in my place. And it seems like they're doing a colony emigration. You see, there's a queen right there. And here's another one coming up right there. They're moving somewhere, who knows where. They create these really long trails. I don't know what species this is. I initially thought that it was Monomorium destructor, which is actually now known as um, Trichomyrmex destructor. But then I caught that species and they look very different from this. They're a little bit smaller. Look at one, two, three queens just passed by. <laughs> I remember when I was living in North America, I was struggling to find queens at some points of the year, but here it seems I can just if I wanted, pick them off a wall, start my own colony. This here is Charity, one of my two Persian cats. She's awesome. She likes to watch my... Hey! Hey! Stop fighting, guys! Out! And that, of course, was Benigno, my miniature schnauzer. Charity over here likes to watch the 
weave her ants every now and then. One time I caught her inside while I was working around the formicarium. This flap here, I forgot to close and she crawled inside and I had to fish her out from the top. And this here is Cupido, my red-tailed boa constrictor. He's actually an albino pet. Keeping cold-blooded animals here in the tropics is pretty cool because they don't need heat lamps and I don't have to worry about humidity um, being low. And I just add simple lighting just to light the animals so they look beautiful. The temperature here in Manila is about 81 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty warm. And this is the nighttime. During the day, it's hotter. All right, Cupido. Super tame, this boy. This here is my sarong green tree python. He's a male. His name is Valentino. And he's very shy, so I don't really force him to be handled. But there he is. Whoops. Sorry. Sorry, buddy. There he goes. See him. All right. That's it. That's all the cameo he's going to get. He's more of a display snake. I think designing vivariums for animals is one of my favorite things to do. This here is Sangol, my pet Vietnamese potbelly pig. Um, and she's made appearances in my previous video. She's the one you hear oinking and grunting and making pig noises in the background. She's very vocal. Um, and she's very spoiled here. If you are interested, I created a funny music video on my other YouTube channel about Sangol the pig over here. Right, Sangs? She loves being scratched. Watch. You scratch her belly. You want your belly scratched? Mm hmm? Yes? Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. Yeah. Scratch your belly. Alright, I wanted to show you guys, excuse me, Charity, my Dubia cockroach colony. Um, they make excellent feeders. They're just really easy to breed. They eat pretty much anything, but I put slices of orange. Um, to give them moisture, uh, different vegetables. They even eat cat food and dog food, which is pretty neat. Now let me show you what they look like without having any come out. Oh, Charity, of course, wants to get in there. See that? The males have wings and the females have these kind of like pseudo wings, I guess. And the babies are really small. They're really tiny. See that? I um, mean, they make good insect food for whatever you have. Oh, and here's my other Persian cat, Awit. My cats are always wondering, what are you up to? Now let's have these creatures at home. Um, and this, of course, is what the nymphs look like. Kind of like oops. Okay, guys, don't get in there. The nymphs look like this. So if you can get your hands on some feeder roaches, um, and in this case they're dubia, that's the name of the genus, they uh, make great insect food. Now I do have a lot of pets admittedly, but I do have house staff that helps me with all of the maintenance, thank goodness, because without them I wouldn't be able to keep all of these amazing animals. All right, this here is my um, Lassia Dora Klugi, also known as a Scarlet Bahia Bird Eater Tarantula. She's quite large. She's about eight inches leg span. She's a big girl. Now, I was always under the impression that tarantulas need to burrow and they should be given a hide or the opportunity to dig. But um, the one who sold this very big girl to me said that she doesn't need a hide and that here in the tropics, the humidity level is pretty optimum. So um, a lot of times people just keep their tarantulas in a small container so that they feel they're already in a burrow. And as you can see in this entire terrarium, she's completely blanketed the bottom with silk. 
All right, this here is my second colony under my care. It's Trichomermex destructor. If you saw our last video, um, I talk a little bit about them and they're doing really well. We're going now on our second week and uh, they're housed here in this Ends Canada OmniNest vertical. And as you can see, they've really moved the colony closer to the hydration chambers it seems the brood has doubled in size, which I suppose was expected. They're pretty easy to contain so far, actually. I haven't had any problems. Um, they have a very nasty reputation for, well, I mean, with a species destructor, <laughs> species name, um, well, to cause a lot of destruction, you know, they cause fires in the home and um, short circuits and they ruin machinery and all of this crazy stuff that I hear but so far they're pretty easy to contain especially for a small species now remember that smaller species of ant that is kind of like everywhere in my place I noticed they're trying to get in to this nest do you see them they're really trying to get into the nest um, and sometimes I'll find this whole bottom section. See, there's one right now. I'm trying to get into this formicarium. But this colony is like, na 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 na. This is our home. Now, the first three rooms are pretty cool. Here, you'll notice that they've dragged a few pieces of cricket leg. I feed this colony crickets some sugar water and, of course, water. Um, they They've dragged some of the body parts here, and they've also left bits and pieces of their garbage here. And then in that entrance, they've kind of like blocked it with a bunch of debris. Do you see that there? They've like really blocked up that entrance. I think they're treating like they're treating it like this here is the entrance to their nest. Pretty kind of neat. This garbage pile has absorbed a lot of moisture and has started some condensation thing going on here, which is pretty neat. A good formicarium allows various microclimates in different parts of the nest where you have, you know, a good temperature and humidity gradient. You don't want the entire nest being the same temperature and being the same uh, humidity. Look at all these extra ants here trying to get in. They really are pesky. Give up, you ants! This formicarium is designed to keep ants in, but also to keep you ants out. And here we have another ant trail of those small pesky ants that I thought was Trichomermex destructor, but it's actually a smaller species, I think. And where are they going, you ask? Well, I followed this trail and found out this. They're eating my Mikey Bustos chocolates. <laughs> um, one of the reasons why Filipinos don't leave chocolates outside, just sitting anywhere, is because, um, well, ants get to them. And it looks like they're eating it. No, I bet you, yeah, see, all of this is space empty because they've completely brought pieces of chocolate out and they're bringing it to the colony. Oh man. Now, I know in North America people freak out when they have an ant problem and it's a problem. Um, but here in the Philippines they're pretty much everywhere. There's just no getting rid of them and if you do fumigate your place they'll move right back in. Um, so I guess the people here have just kind of accepted that you live with ants, whether you like it or not. Um, along with, you know, geckos and even giant cockroaches. And I of course don't want to fumigate my place because, yeah, all my other invertebrates will die. My ants and my tarantula and possibly my reptiles, they might inhale poison, so I don't want to do that. Alrighty, and while I'm at it, I can't forget to show you this little guy, just so I don't leave anybody out. He's my beardy. 
Juvenile Bearded Dragon. His name is Tarzan. There you go, Tarzan. Wanna see some ants? I love him a lot. When I first got this guy, he was deathly afraid of people. But now he's just chillin'. And it's his bedtime, so I'm going to put him to sleep now. And there you have it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And, uh, oh, if ever you guys need help, a lot of you guys have various questions, um, especially you beginner and keepers out there, be sure to email me at uh, MikeyJBustos at gmail.com. I'd be happy to answer your questions. I get a lot of questions, you know, from customers and from new ant keepers. So please be patient. I'll get around to answering all your emails. Um, and also be sure to check out our GAN project if you are having problems finding a queen. I know it's approaching hibernation season now there in North America, but uh, we have a lot of new uh, ant keepers who signed up with the GAN project. And that of course is our global ant nursery project where we sell queens. Um, and we also offer a platform for you guys who are keeping ants, who have more ants than you can care for, to sell your queens to people in your city. So check out our GAN page um, on our website under Queen Ants for Sale. And uh, see if there's a GAN farmer in your city. Maybe we can sell you an ant colony. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching again. Please subscribe to my videos. Sans Canada signing out. Bye. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks so much for watching my video. It really means a lot to me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be updated every time I upload a video to my channel every first and third Monday of the month. Check out my ant tutorial playlist. And don't forget to also check out my new Weaver Ant video. It's Ant Love Forever, guys. Bye.